back with another Meet the Pro Bruce Bolt series. Uh, I'm Bear, and today we've got one of our newest guys, newest members of Bruce Bolt, and also one of the newest members of professional baseball, Reggie Crawford. What's going on, guys? I appreciate you having, having me on here, Bear. Yeah, like Bear said, I just got drafted, what was it, July, mid-July, so new to Pro Bowl and new to the Bruce Bolt family, so I'm, I'm excited to get started. Yeah, no, we're excited to have you on. I saw a picture of you in the gloves the other day, and I was like, hell yeah, that's our guy. Dude, so I know. it's pretty exciting. So, so how are things going? Where are you right now? So things are going great, man. I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona. I have a place here with some friends. And uh, right now, what the offseason looks like, I wake up, I go to the facility, work out, come back, second workout later in the day, just at a, at a different gym. And uh, usually either a workout or yoga. And I mean, it's, it's pretty chill, man. Just hanging out, doing what I got to do to put myself in the best position for next year. But no, it's been great. I mean, Scottsdale's unbelievable. The weather's been perfect. I always see pictures from back home in PA or back in Connecticut and it's freezing. So, I mean, I'm definitely enjoying it. So I'm having a good time. I, I can imagine it's definitely a change for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I remember last time I talked to you when it was you, me, Mark, you were rehabbing a little bit. Are you, are you feeling good now? Yeah. Yeah. So rehab, we, we just finished like my rehab about two weeks ago or so I was throwing bullpens and my bullpen progression started what, maybe late August, if I did, if I had to guess. So bullpens were, went really well. And then, like I said, I finished up two weeks ago, got up to like the 90, 92 mark. That's where we had me sit and then shut down. And then we're going to ramp back up for the, for spring training. So then we'll see where I'm at velo wise, where I'm at just in general, which I'm super excited for. Awesome. Well, that that's good to hear. One of the things I don't know how many people who are watching this really know, but you're kind of in a little bit of an interesting position. You pitch and you also play the field. So you're one of those rare two way guys. Are you still keeping up with that now that you're in pro ball? Yeah, we're still we're still going with it. I think I started swinging again in December. Yeah, we, I wasn't swinging as I was as I was pitching just because they didn't want too heavy a workload on my elbow initially, but yeah, hitting and pitching will both start up again in December and then we'll just, we'll ride it through. But yeah, no, it's, it's definitely, it's been enjoyable. It's definitely a good time. And it's, I'm definitely thankful to be in this, in this unique situation. Absolutely. That'd be, that'd be so cool to one, be in professional ball, but two, be able to get, play both sides of the ball. I feel like mm -hmm. it would just be so fun. It's definitely um, a lot of fun. <clears throat> sure. Before we kind of go more baseball centric with it, Tell us just a little bit about like growing up, your at home life and just kind of where, how you got to where you are now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm from a town called Frackville, Pennsylvania. There's not, not too much going on in Pennsylvania anyway, but really not too much going on in Frackville. Yeah, I started off as a swimmer. Swimming was like my sport throughout my whole life. Like I was a swimmer before I was a baseball player. And I mean, for me, it's just like one of those small town things. Like I would just go my I would do my days and I'll just we'd go ride bikes ride our scooters all that kind of stuff and I'd, I'd have some practices in the morning and and at night and it's just one of those things where I never at that age I I was not thinking about professional baseball I wasn't thinking about playing college baseball like I was just I was just living my life you know I was pretty much living in the pool so it's it's really cool to see it take a twist the reason why baseball got started up for me seriously at a late age was just because it's it's a little bit more expensive for baseball than it is for swimming. Whereas for swimming, we could just, we could afford the teams and we could afford to go to different meets because everything was local. And unlike baseball, it's like, if you were a swimmer, you could just look at my times and, and coaches could know how good you are. Whereas baseball, it's like, all right, yeah, you can see some video, but ultimately like they have to see you in person to really get an idea. So that was, that was the biggest downfall for me in that sense. But yeah, I mean, I'm super thankful that I did swim because I mean, I feel like it set me up physically and mentally, more so mentally, to be able to handle certain things, especially in pro ball. Obviously, it's a grind, mm -hmm. but I feel as though I've done so many different things in the pool that chances are it'll be a lot harder than anything I'll ever do ever again. It just really sets myself up for, for success, I feel, in a sense of just my mental state and how I approach things. So again, super thankful to come up, grow up in a small town and, and grow up swimming and stuff like that. But I do feel as though it shaped me to, to be the person I am today. Yeah, 100%. What age did you start playing baseball? I think, well, I think the first time I picked up a bat was, I think I was like three, three or so. 
and then for baseball, all I would do is just I would I would play my t-ball, my minor league, the little league, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, like for for baseball, there was no travel ball. I would just play three months out of the year, and and call it a day. Where or swimming, I was just swimming every single. It felt like every single day out of the year. Like I I was not taking breaks there. So it was definitely a little bit different of a situation. Between I feel like that definitely helps though, too, that swimming was like your main thing because I, I know I played baseball from every day from 10 until I graduated high school and I got burnt out quickly. So mm-hmm. I can imagine oh, like, because I can imagine like, swimming helped with that. Exactly. And like, even just like, not even just like playing baseball, it's just like, I know how terrible swimming was. So it's like, I can, I can go over four in baseball, you know, and it's just like, it, it, it happens, you know, it's not like I'm dying in the pool or I can't feel my arms or legs. Like it happens, yeah. you know, but like that definitely enhances my love for the game because I know how, how, how rough swimming was. So it definitely does help. Crazy. Do you have any siblings, brothers, sisters, two sisters? I have an older sister. She's 23, Kayla. And then I have a little sister. She's eight. Me and Alizé, we're like, she's a mini me. We're, we're 13 <laughs> years to the day. With the same birthday just a couple years later and uh, yeah she she's she's a mini me because she will she will give it back she is she's a mouth on her she she dishes it out quick but yeah she she loves the sport she loves doing everything i think she's doing she's playing baseball soccer gymnastics track and field swimming and there's one more but yeah she's she just she goes non-stop and that's how i was at that age i just always had to be doing something so it's it's pretty cool to see and now that i'm a, i'm a little bit grown up just kind of like what I was almost like when I was younger like that. Well, she's playing baseball. Why don't we, you haven't gotten her any Bruce Bolts yet? What are, what are we doing? I need to, dude. I need yeah. to. No, I got to hook her up. Yeah, just text me. I'll get you some bolts. Oh, for I, her. I appreciate Easy. that. We'll get her some. And did your older sister play softball at all or baseball? She she swam. She's a swimmer. Swimmer. Uh, yeah. Yep. So she was a swimmer as well. She stopped in high school. She didn't do anything in college or or anything like that but yeah she was a she was a swimmer so she she understands the grind as well crazy mm-hmm. um all right so what we do with all of our other guys just kind of a quick this is another before we lead into baseball just a lightning round just because we like to kind of mm-hmm. get to know y'all's personalities a little bit no thought just blurt your answer you know all right first question what's your favorite junk food oh dude chick-fil-a What's your favorite animal or what animal would you be and why? Dude, <laughs> I, I have, like, I don't know, but I like, I love gorillas for some reason. Like I, I had a gorilla, like a little thing in my room when I was in college. I don't, I don't know why, but I don't know. I would say that for whatever reason. <laughs> Fair enough. Gorilla is a good answer. If your, if your life was a movie, what actor would you have play you and why? What's his name? Michael B. Jordan. Michael, that's a good pick. Michael B. Jordan. I don't know. The, he's a beast. Dude, just stud. Really, just no stud. way, no other way yeah. about it. Exactly. You prefer texting or talking on the phone? Probably talking on the phone. It just depends. Talking is a lot easier sometimes, or texting is just sometimes more convenient. Yeah. Favorite childhood show? Full House. I used to love Full House. Favorite day of the week? Favorite day of the week? Probably Friday. I feel like everybody's just, vibes are up on Fridays. Everybody's all excited for the weekend, whatever. But a so solid like, day. Yep. Last song you listened to? I think it was Duffel Bag Boy. It was actually my walk up for in college. I think <laughs> Duffel Bag Boy by Lil Wayne. Favorite holiday? Christmas. I feel like everybody just enjoys Christmas. So that's yeah. by far my favorite. And then the place you want to travel to most in the world? most in the world uh all right i don't know i don't know about in the world but i'll just say in the next few months i'll say cabo because i'm going there (laughs) for the new year so i'll say cabo i I gotta i gotta put some more thought into where i'd want to go in the world hey i think cabo is a great answer i agree and seems like a good time i mean exactly anywhere you can have a good time i feel like is where i'd be wanting to go that's right i agree all right, so done with the lightning, crushed it. Couple more non baseball or I guess kind of baseball related. So growing up, I, I don't know if it was like this for you. We're only a couple years apart. How old are you? 
I'm 21. No, we're the same age. We're the not even a couple years apart. That's crazy. <laughs> so growing up, I know that I know for me at least, coaches really pushed you to play one sport and kind of like make that your thing. Mm-hmm. What's your and you seem to do everything, I guess. What's your what's your view on you know playing multiple sports versus becoming a pro at one sport just when you're younger and kind of just growing? Dude, I just think like there are so many different things to learn in so many different sports. Whereas like when I was younger, like I would, I played basketball, I, I played soccer and it was only for like a couple of years, like here and there. But even then it's like, I feel like you could really take things from one sport to the other and apply it to the next, you know? And I think it just, like you were talking about before, it, it kind of, I think gets you away from getting burnt out in that sport. And I just kind of, gives you time to refresh your mind in a different way, you know? And like, I know for me with swimming, like there are so many different things that I've taken from swimming and that I've been able to apply apply into baseball. Whereas like, if I hadn't have swam, then I would have missed out on so much of that. So I I think it's really important. Luckily, like growing up for me, it wasn't one of those things where people were like, Hey, like you just need to play baseball. You just need to swim. I had the, the flexibility of being able to do both. But then again, it comes down to, handling it and being real with like all right like is this actually helping me is this hurting me whatever you know but it's one of those things where I do feel as though it's it's definitely beneficial to do more than one sport for sure I definitely I feel like it definitely helps athleticism as well because I mean you're you're going from doing one thing to doing a completely different thing it's gonna help it's not gonna hurt in my opinion exactly that's a good answer so being from Pennsylvania who was your team growing up? Are you rooting for the Phillies right now? Well, like, I guess I was younger. When I was younger, I was more of a Phillies fan just because, like, everybody was. So I was. I don't really, like, now I really don't have a favorite team at all. I don't, I don't, I, like, I don't. Now it should be sports. San Fran, I would assume. It is, it is San Fran now. But, like, I honestly don't even follow sports that, that much. It is, it is cool, like, seeing all my friends back home and all all my family friends back home, like get all excited about the world series and stuff. So that that's definitely cool. And I obviously want them to win, but uh, yeah, dude, like I don't really, I don't have a favorite team in anything, honestly, again, except for the giants. <laughs> I'm the same way. I was a fan of all my parents' teams growing up, but other than uh-huh. that, I really don't follow anything very closely. Yeah. Especially exactly. now with baseball, now with Bruce mm-hmm. Bolt and everything, I can't have one team. Cause yeah, like, exactly. I'd hate to root against anyone, you know, Right. <laughs> definitely got to definitely got to root for the giants now, especially when you get pulled up. That's right. That was actually my first major league baseball game. So it won't be that hard. No way. Yeah. I caught a foul ball there. All I wanted right. funny, funniest thing ever. All I wanted when I went to the game, I was like, I fully expected that I was going to catch a foul ball. Like it was like a normal occurrence. Do you know who hit it? Not a clue. This was back in, shoot I'd like to say like 2010 and yeah. I had no clue I had no clue like I was just starting to play baseball yeah and all I wanted was a foul ball and luckily <laughs> it landed in my hat that's Crazy too funny moment ever. that's insane all right baseball time I'm used to playing down south where it's warm year round how long do y'all get to play up north because I mean it's got to get too cold at some point dude I feel like like thinking about the high school I feel as though you play regular season and then the weather gets nice. And then it's like the, the playoffs and stuff. Like I remember we used to, we used to go out in the parking lot after they would plow it off in the mornings and like we get ground balls and we get fly balls and like we'd go in the gym to hit. Like it was just always, it was freezing cold. You'd have to layer up. The ground was always wet because it's either raining or snowing or foggy or whatever. But then going to college, same thing. Like we, we had turf, so they would just literally plow off the turf and then we'd practice like an hour later. But just because the snow's not there doesn't mean that the ground's not frozen. So yeah. you'd be sliding and sometimes we wouldn't be able to, but you'd be sliding for like a ball or sliding into a base and like just completely tear your knee up because it's like cement. Dude, it was just, it was, it was crazy. And even then, like on top of the 20 degree weather, the snow then would sit alongside or outside of the, outside of the field. So like if we're doing lives outside, the snow is so bright and it just right where the pitcher releases it. That's where the ball is coming from. So it's like, it's impossible. So definitely some, uh, some issues with that, but ultimately 
it's nice knowing that no matter where else you were going to play in the mm-hmm. college season, it's like, it's not going to get any colder. So you're not one of those teams down South that go up North and it's like, they're used to 65 and yeah, it's used to 65 or whatever. And in February, and they say maybe go up in March or April and it's 40 or 30. I mean, at least at that point, we're not used to it, but used to it in a sense. Yeah. I was definitely about to mention that. Cause I feel like it, it gives you an upper hand for sure. Mm-hmm. Going and playing down South here. I mean, you're, you're now warm, which is great, but then mm-hmm. you take a team back up North and you're like, okay, we're used to this. And they're, they're shaking. They, yeah, they don't exactly. even know what to do. And by no means is it, is it any warmer for us? It's just like, you it's at just, least have experienced it. You, you know, have a little bit cool. of grit going in there. Yeah, exactly. Cause it's still freezing. So <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. What was the recruiting process like for you in high school? Yeah. So just like my whole baseball career, it was fairly unique. Travel ball got started like really late for me. And uh, it was the summer going into my senior year that I really like got into the travel ball circuit. And what happened was my high school coach, we were always very close as I was growing up. And he knew that I really wanted to play travel ball and I wanted to play baseball in college. So he did some research trying to figure out what travel teams are actually in the area, yada, yada, yada. And this coach, Paul McGloin, came to see me play. And he was the coach of the East Coast Sandhogs. And he's like, called me after the game. He's like, hey, we'd love you to play for us. And I was like, all right, like, I appreciate that. But like, how much is it? And it was expensive. And my high school coach, he knew that. So he and a few others got some money together to help me out. And I was able to get on the team. And uh, that started my travel ball career. And it was pretty crazy because I think the first weekend, what, what, Paul, what Paul told me to do is he said, send me a list of an A-list and a B-list and a C-list of schools you want me to reach out to. So I sent him an A-list, B-list, C-list. I have no idea who's good, who's not, where I could even land up or end up. So I just typed in like top college baseball schools, a list of 60 came up, 20, 40, 60, A-list, B-list, C-list, sent it off. And then I think like the first weekend I had like 10 to 15 schools come see me in Massachusetts. And like, dude, going into it, I was like, all right, like if I get recruited, like cool, but I can't imagine like there will be a ton of interest, whatever. So when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, like this is, this is insane. This is really cool. So UConn happened to be one of the first schools to see me. They saw me in Massachusetts that weekend. And that started the conversation dialogue between us. And then as the summer went on, like my name started to get more traction and uh, got invited to the area code tryouts and East Coast Pro tryouts. I didn't really think I was going to make those because like everybody was committed and I really had no clue what I was doing, but I made both teams and that definitely helped a ton. And then I got a lot of interest from SEC schools, ACC schools, which I was excited for. And then, yeah, I mean, later on the summer, just things worked out the way they did and ended up committing to UConn in October of senior year, I believe. So, I mean, my friends have been committed for three years at this point. Definitely felt like things were, were getting pretty late, but it was cool to see how, how schools are definitely still open to recruiting me. It worked out perfectly. I'm really happy with the way it worked out because I feel as though UConn was the best spot for me as far as the coaches, the situation, the location. It was, it was, it was perfect. It was awesome. Was UConn one of your A-list schools? I'm not sure because I think they may have been a B-list, honestly, because I'm trying to think of like the list. And I think they had a, a really good year the year before. So the A-list was a top 20. And I think UConn fell in the, the 21 to 40 range. So, so they were right there that they were knocking on the door of A-list. Yeah, they were knocking on the door. So, so before you ended up at UConn, did you have a dream school or were you just kind of like, I want to, I want to go somewhere? Dude, I was just like, I'll just go wherever people are recruiting me, whoever wants me, you know? I just wanted to make sure that I was going somewhere where it'd be the best fit, made the most sense. Yeah. What were, who were some of the SEC schools that recruited you? I feel like I saw a picture of you on like a visit to Tennessee or something, but. I- well, that, that was, that was a couple months ago. That was right before the draft. Really? But, yeah. In, in, in high school, Vandy came to see me in Tennessee. I was talking to Arkansas, Missouri, South Carolina. Kentucky and I think that's 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 about it for SEC in high school but yeah I was in the portal a few months ago um, leading up to the draft just because I didn't know how the draft was going to turn out in Tennessee I ended up committing there Tennessee gotcha that's what that was awesome I know there's a lot of parents who watch this obviously you recruit at the end of your high school career but I mean a lot of people like fight to get recruited right at the beginning 
So it's mm-hmm. good to know it doesn't have to be right at the beginning. You can, yeah. if you're good enough, you'll, you'll make it. So mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah, it did. Cause that's, that's what a lot of people think I feel is like, even I remember in high school, like everybody just wants to get out so fast and so early and try to get with a school instead of just like, I mean, for me, it's not like I had the luxury of doing this, but it just so happened that like, I let my body develop a lot, a lot happens in, in three years, you know, from yeah. being a freshman to a senior. And I mean, it's never too late, even though at a point it is too late, but in a sense, it's like, you don't necessarily need to rush these things. And that that's what I saw firsthand. Absolutely. At what point in your career, whether it be in high school or college, did you kind of think to yourself and realize like, I'm, I can probably go pro with this. I can see myself making it to the next level. Even when I was getting recruited for colleges, I was like, pro ball was not even in my mind. Like I was not, I was so new to it. I didn't even know how any of this worked. So for pro ball, I think it happened like the second weekend in, in summer ball because the first weekend it were, there were schools and the second weekend there were like scouts come to see me. And I was like, dude, this is like, this is all happening so fast. Cause I think from the time that I started to the time I got drafted was like 11 months, maybe a little bit over. So like all this happened within a year. So like I had to get real with myself really quick because there's a point where I don't even know if I can play college ball then it's like, all right, like I could actually play college ball. And then a week later, it's like, oh, like I could actually like play pro ball. And then like, it just got real quickly, but I had to adjust and I had to kind of slow everything down. And that's what I did. But yeah, I, I would say early into that summer is when I was, I realized that I could play pro ball. That's sick. I, I thought I was going to make pro ball from the second I started playing baseball. (laughs) So I was a little far off. I consider myself kind of like I made the major leagues with Bruce. Yeah, I'm about to say, dude, like, (laughs) this is pretty cool. What are you talking about? So Bruce Bolt, Bruce Bolt's my quote unquote entry into the major league. Dude, yeah, I agree. So I asked Tyler this. I think I interviewed Tyler Naquin like two weeks ago and kind of asked him about his experience at Texas A&M. What Mm -hmm. was... What was it like for you up at UConn? Yeah, so, I mean, it was awesome. It was, it was cool because, like, it was something that I was used to. I feel like if I was someone who's coming from, like, say, out west or down south, going up to a northeast school would be <clears throat> slightly different, obviously, because weather and stuff like that. But in a sense of just, like, baseball and, like, the culture they have there, I mean, it, it honestly was a perfect fit, you know? Like, my biggest concern was, like, going to a school – like say a Vandy or like a top SEC school where it's like, I wouldn't even know what to expect or I would just be a next guy on the roster. Just given the fact that I have very little reps from the stories that I've heard, it just, it sounded way too cutthroat for what I was ready for just in a sense of like my baseball ability and UConn, like they were just from the second I, I talked to them, I knew they were just great people to begin with. And that's kind of what I wanted to surround myself with. And I mean, I was there for three years and that that's stood up the whole time. And yeah, I mean, baseball is obviously great. It's a great program, great school, great location. Like everything was perfect. But again, like the coaches and the people there are definitely by far the best part. And again, like I'm so happy everything worked out the way it did because I don't know what it would have looked like if I was somewhere else. But again, I'm really, really happy I ended up there. That's awesome. Congratulations on that. That's huge. I know for a fact down South, like what you said, you're just next man up. Mm-hmm. Southern sports are the most cutthroat thing going. It is exactly. insane. Mm-hmm. It's like, why can't we just play? I but know. It's insane. It's intense for sure. Definitely. Okay. So 30th overall pick San Francisco Giants. Did you, did you kind of expect to be drafted high up or were you just kind of going into it? Like, let's, let's see where this goes. The draft was just a whole different thing of emotions because obviously like coming off of team USA and in the fall of last year I mean I was hearing upwards of the first pick you know so then I injured my arm and whatever that happens and I was just so curious to see what would go down in the next however many months it would have been leading up to the draft and it it what happened like what I thought was going to happen happened like time goes on and people are able to play And like, I just keep falling and falling and falling because I'm not playing. I'm not like I'm at school, so I'm not showing face anywhere. And it's almost like people like forgot about me, you know? 
that was the funniest thing going into it because I had no idea what to expect. Like I was hearing upwards of like the 10th pick down to the hundredth hundredth pick. So that goes into why I, I entered the portal because I didn't know if I was going to go back to school, you know, and like, if I was going to go back to school, I wanted to figure out where I was going to go for my, my last year draft day. I think I heard from like two teams before the actual draft. So I'm like, what is going on? I was so like, I was, I'm, I was frustrated. I was like, there's no way I've only heard from two teams. And obviously the draft this year would have been different from the draft when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so drafts going on, I'm seeing some of my friends being picked and like, again, like, it's so cool, like seeing your friends and like, you, you know, like 90% of these guys. So it's awesome. Yeah. Cause I remember looking at high school, like, I, I, I don't know any of these guys. I can't imagine I'll ever meet these guys. And now like, look this year, it's like, I know all these guys. So it was so cool. And then I think I got my first call around pick 20. And then I got another one after that, another one after that. And then I think around pick 26 or 27, that's when I found out it's going to be the giants and everything lined up. It made the most sense. And that's when we decided to take the offer. And then from pick 27 to 30, that was by far the most stressful part because we agreed. Right. And you don't want anything to fall through because your expectations are there. Like, all right, like right, I'm going to pick 30. It's only pick 26, 27. And it's like the, the worst part. And all my friends say it is so funny because I told some of my friends that it'd be pick 30 around pick 28. And from 29 to 30, I think there were like 15 commercials for whatever reason. So like, <laughs> dude, what is going on? I was like, is this falling through somehow? I was like, are they trying to like get more time for whatever? So I was like, oh my God. But uh, yeah, I would say the, the worst part was right after I found out and just waiting because I just wanted to make sure that they were going to call my name at pick 30. Yeah, that's crazy. Were you with, were you just with family when this happened? I was with, I was with family and some, some close friends. Like I had my high school coach there, a couple of my high school coaches, family, some friends. So it was, it was a good group of people. Yeah. We were just back home in Pennsylvania. I got an invite to go to LA for it. I think like three to four weeks prior, but I would rather just stay at home and, and have all the people that I really care about with me. For sure. Now that that's dude, that's incredible though. Just I get I like when you were telling that story just then of like the anticipation of it. I'm mm -hmm. sitting there, I'm like, oh my, I like I can only imagine. Right? I get I get anxious over little things. I can only yeah. imagine the anxiety of dude, it was crazy. That's wild, man. All right. Last thing that I'd like to ask all the guys is obviously Bruce Bolt, we've grown a lot. We're rounding out year four right now. How did you, how did you find out about, or just about Bruce Bolt and just kind of tell us, or just, yeah, tell us a little bit about how you found out and how we kind of got in contact on your end. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like I see it everywhere, especially now it's like, I feel like everybody's using it, you know, and it makes complete sense as to why, because then we got in contact. Uh, I think it was the agency that got in contact with you or vice versa. And then I got some product and I was like, dude, like this is a no brainer. Like it's just I'm not even trying to say this for the thing. Like it, it just blows everything else out of the water, which is why I'm so excited to, to work with you guys. But yeah, I mean, the product's great. And like what you've done, dude, it's, it's, it's insane, you know? So it's, it's really cool. And it's really like really easy to back that. So yeah, it just made the most sense. And I mean, I've enjoyed, I've been enjoying it like crazy. I appreciate it, man. And hopefully I can come see you for spring training. We can meet in person, but uh, yeah, just excited to see what comes and how soon you're going to get up there. I appreciate it, brother. For sure, man. Well, thank you guys for hopping on with me and Reggie and be sure to check out all our new gear we have coming out. We're going to have some, have some good stuff going on.